My name is uh, Les Lai. I'm a contemporary Coast Salish graphic artist. My colonized Catholic Canadian name is Leslie Robert Sam, and I've taken that colonized Catholic Canadian name and transformed it into Les Lai. My roots are mostly Coast Salish. Um, Coast Salish um, I, on both sides of my family. There's uh, one side is Cowichan, and the other side of my uh, dad's side is Penelicate, my mom's Cowichan. But uh, one of my families is large, the Alphonse family. So with that family, I also have roots in Esquimalt here in Victoria. I um, work with acrylic on canvas, uh, on paper, and then occasionally drums and paddles, but I generally prefer to stay away from drums and paddles because I think that's sort of decontextualizing the intended uh, usage of, of what it was intended for. So the history of Coast Salish art is um, something that's been reflected in my life. I just like, I love like art in general and that was like my way of dueling when I was taking notes as an undergraduate student. I'd just like draw a bunch of crescents and trigons and design elements on my uh, note, on my notes there. And then um, after that, I, um, I, I, got, I finished my bachelor's degree and I began my master's at uh, UVic with Andrea Walsh. And a part, a component of that, uh, it was an interdisciplinary master's degree, and a component of that was creating artwork as a, a part of my thesis. My uh, process of painting was like really slow at first. I just used like a real little tiny brush, draft with like a um, 0.3 millimeter pencil, which I still do to this day. But I, I started using a 0.3 millimeter pencil, and then I draft the line. And then I just followed along that line with like a really small little tiny brush. But now like I, as my skills have developed, I've like gotten into the bigger brushes and really increased the pace of how my hand moves with the brush. We live in like the most um, urbanized area of the Northwest Coast and that had a profound impact on Coast Salish art and culture. And the other thing too is that the art is a really sacred art tradition, so it's not really open to um, like being talked about in public in a public context because it's deeply spiritual, which is something that I'm um, deconstructing with my work, but also bringing, like I said before, a bit more of an urban um, reflection on Coast Salish art. Yeah, Reflections, this is a piece that I created um, for the Cornette building when it became a showcase for Coast Salish art. So what I wanted to do with that was to reflect something that's a truly traditional Coast Salish design, which is the faces, so how the faces are rendered with the um, trigons and then the crescents, the trigons, oval shapes, and then the sea forms. So with this design, I was uh, reflecting on uh, students' life going from uh, positive and negative because in this design the positive and negative are switched in the design. So this is all of the positive space right here and all of the negative space is the area that's completely um, transparent in the design. And then that's completely flipped over in this one where the face of the is completely um, transparent and then the negative design elements are the the space right there. So it was um, reflections on positive and negative, so that was um, positive and negative aspects of a student's life as well as uh, reflecting on um, the changes that a student undergoes when they're, they're in university. So what it had to do with was the glass and being able to perceive reality at a level that's beyond the borders that we have in life. So the glass symbolizing a border, and then but being able to look beyond that border and see reality beyond the borders that we have in everyday life. Um, I was also, I wanted to have an image initially that would reflect, that could be, um, I don't want to say universal, but uh, global, in the sense that it would be able to reflect different ethnicities and nationalities 
and not be specifically any any particular um, group of people. So with the design, I also wanted to be more of a, a happy, um, welcoming uh, reflection of life. Um, this one is uh, Thunderbird and Killer Whale. With this piece, I wanted to basically take all of the really traditional Coast Salish design elements and uh, render the killer whale and thunderbird through those design elements. And I like the thought of like red and black is like a lot of uh, artists use that on the northwest coast. But I also wanted to use the orange color in there, which isn't quite as common. That's more common to the southern northwest coast than it is to uh, northern um, art traditions. That'd be more like uh, with Kwak uh, Wak or Nachalnath art, the orange uh, color of the design. This one is like just more having to do with uh, tying things ecologically within one design. So basically what you have is the salmon here represented in a profile perspective. You know, the negative space of this crescent is also the top of the head and then the salmon head and then the mouth right there so it's a profile view of a salmon and then at the top at the bottom of the design you have a frog just a, a representation of a frog you just have basically have the mouth and the two eyes at the bottom so you have the abstract representation of the frog in the design and then at the top here the negative space of this mouth um, is also it's a mouth, but it's an eyebrow, so it's like visual punning, so it's two different things at once. So you have the eye there, you have the eye of a raven head, the top of the beak, the lower part of the jaw, and the mouth right there. And then along with that, you also have the human or face of the sun, where you have the two eyes right there, and the nose right here, and the eyebrows right there, all through visual punning, and then the mouth right there at the center. So it's like tying everything into an ecological circle within the image. Um, this one, Salish Community, this one probably is one of my more favorite ones at the, uh, out of the Salish Weave collection. Um, it's two different things at once, like on one level it's a spindle whorl design. It's um, in the spirit of spindle whorls, you have the, the circle in the center and then the, the uh, circular form of the spindle whorl, and then you have four faces. And the traditional significance of this is like the circle and the number four having to do with uh, balance, um, uh, traditional symbolism in the image, as well as uh, a bit of a contemporary reflection on Coast Salish communities as uh, suffering from uh, the legacy of residential schools and nepotism in politics and um, internalized racism is like really dividing people into different, uh, different, uh, like just really dividing, dividing Coast Salish community. So that was partially what the reflection on this was. It, it's a bit more extensive when it comes to the actual artist statement of the, the work. A little over a decade ago, I was in Seattle and I was riding in a car like on the highway and I saw the Starbucks logo, but it was basically only like the top half of it was exposed like this. And at a distance, I thought, wow, that looks like a Coast Salish design. It looks like just like, just like the lenticular eyes and the um, nose and then off the negative space, the green space of the hair, to me it appeared to be crescents, like there's like crescents coming off of the head. I traced the logo and I had this basic idea of okay well I want salmon going over the like instead of the mermaid tails I want salmon to be going on the side and then instead of having the crown I want to have like 
a salmon type kraut. And there's, um, and then with the hair, basically it could be interpreted as being hair or water. That was like one of the perspectives on that was, like I was saying when I was designing it, the, the arms just appeared to be awkward, like in the original logo. It was uh, made on a drum just to um, symbolize like the music that's inside Starbucks. Like there's all this music in there. So it's like, okay, well here's music from a Coast Salish perspective. And then have it be, being like a, a parody of culture because uh, that's one of the, the uh, perspective is, is that uh, Starbucks tries to create culture by creating an environment and like a gathering place for people. The idea was that um, Starbucks began in Coast Salish territory and it's uh, my conviction that Starbucks wouldn't actually even exist without Coast Salish territory so that's a bit more of a political perspective on the work. I wanted it to be um, resources, like an image of resources. So the salmon are symbolic of resources. The salmon and the crown being symbolic of resources. And the crown having to do with politics. Like the word crown has like so many um, connotations that have to do with politics. So the crown and then just the act of um, appropriating the, the image was in some ways empowering for me as a contemporary Coast person to take that and to shape it into my own reality. To, to take something that's been imposed on me as a contemporary Coast Salish person. Basically my dream when I began here at UVic as a graduate student, I wanted to have some of my artwork uh, be left behind in, on the campus as a, a Coast Salish legacy for, to, other, to inspire other uh, younger people to pursue their artistic dreams or whatever their dreams might be in their, um, with their education.